on Wednesdays specifically we've been plowing and uh, if you weren't in attendance it really would benefit you to get all of the teachings Amen. because this is something that is very important to me it's very important to the father and trust me it's going to be very important for you somewhere down the line if you are interested in growing in your faith you're interested in letting God do what he needs to do with you as it relates to his kingdom. Now, if, you, if you can't fulfill those two, then just leave it where it's at. No, just kidding. <laughs> but he wants us. God is, uh, he's invoking us to do some different things that we've done in times past. So 2018 won't look like 2017. Amen. And the only way that's going to happen, it's going to have to be done by the spirit of the word. He won't lead you to your own volition. Amen. 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 So we got to incline our ear to the Lord and let Him direct us. Amen. You know, I was thinking of, like, we had a men's meeting yesterday, y'all. Yeah. 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 Every second Saturday, mostly, we have a men's meeting. Meha, mm -hmm. men after the heart of God. Yeah. And we were talking about some phenomenal things. Yeah. And I believe God wants us to, the men to come up, and I believe he's commissioning the whole house to come up as, as, as well. So it's not just a gender-based thrust that God is doing, but he's doing a, it's a corporate thrust in the house. So we've established, I was going to go somewhere, but I'm going to stay true to this because I need to get this finished. Okay, there was a couple of points we established. We started off, we took a look at Pentecost. Uh, we, we dissected a number of verses in Acts 2, am I right? And we looked at it from a different lens, which was allowed the Word of God itself came alive to us in the mm -hmm. first one and a half teaching. And then I took a concerted effort to slow down and allow the teacher to be stirred in me so that we can build specifically. I believe God is interested in building specifically. He will lead you and guide you to all truth. Mm -hmm. And so we established a couple of points. Point number one, we found out, according, we went through 1 Corinthians 14 and found out that we can magnify and glorify the Father. God wants to be magnified. Yeah. We said, how do we magnify God? We're talking about in tongues. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the language that we magnify God. We magnify God as we live Submitted to the Holy Spirit. He's being enlarged. You know, Paul said something in the book of Philipp, Philipp, Philippians. He talked about the Lord being magnified in his body. Anybody ever read that on Philippians? Mm -hmm. And which simply means there was no room for him. I know contemporary Western church don't know much about what I'm saying. But in the East, the Orthodox, the ancient paths, they know that in order for them to fully benefit from the relationship they have, he has to be magnified, he has to be glorified, he has to be exalted in us. And I believe as we begin to magnify, exalt him, as we're submitted, and the tongues gives us the capacity. And I told you yesterday, the more and more I speak in tongues, uh, it lets me know mentally that there's an open heaven and people say we're, we need an open heaven we, we, we have an open heaven and let me just throw this in here because I know we're taping but the heavens your sin cannot shut the heavens well, that's a big statement it cannot cannot shut the heavens Adam shut the heavens because he reached up Right? Mm -hmm. Heaven was on the earth. Genesis says heaven and earth was really together. Heaven was here. The garden of God was here. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Adam raised hell. He raised yeah, he raised hell. Right? I'm not cussing thumb up. He raised a, a dimension of darkness that came into the earth. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus came to fulfill what Adam didn't do. Amen. Therefore, when that voice came out of the heavens and said, this is my son of whom I'm well pleased, from that point on, 
the heavens remain open. We have no witness in the New Testament that the heavens were shut. Amen. Mm -hmm. Only way you're going to find it, you have to go to the Old Testament. Right. Am I right? Help me out, John. Yeah. I know I got some students yeah. in there. The heavens are not shut. Amen. Why would he shut something you're in? That's why I mentioned when we were taping on Facebook Live, I said that you can't break into your house. Yes, People right. talking about the kingdom of heaven suffering violence and the violence taken by force. That's the Old Testament mm -hmm. scripture. He said that from the days of John until now, now is not now, now is in my past. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I don't have to take heaven Amen. by force. Yes. That's like me going to my house and kicking in my doors. Oh, yes. I got keys. Amen. Right? Now, if you come to my house and kick my door in, it's unlawful. But you a thief. So that's a good parallel. So I'm not trying to. Amen. Yeah. So we need to understand that well, he needs to be magnified in our lives. I'm, I'm just getting distracted because I'm just, every time I open my mouth, I get distracted. Number two, praise him. We praise him, merge him. <laughs> we talk about the Greeks and the Arabians, how we are to praise him. And it brought a unification of nationalities. All the cultural barriers were broken. Sixteen nations were represented at the, in, at the upper room. Mm -hmm. so, so God took what Babel did. I mean, at Babel, everybody went their own way. Yeah. We're still babbling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're still babbling in the church. Some folks still going their own way. Yes. But the Holy Spirit is supposed to remove that selfishness, yes. that independence, so we can be unified. So we don't have to be uh, disenfranchised as it relates to our inheritance. Number three, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, which I thought was a phenomenal part of the teaching. I mean, I got, a, I got a charge on the inside of me. My spirit, man, is forever intertwined with the Holy Spirit. I can be built up instantly. I don't have to go to a building. I don't have to go to a location. All I got to do is tap into the right frequency, which is the word and spirit. Well, God is joined together, and no man put asunder. So we can be built up on our most holy faith. Number four, help you to pray. Yes. Amen. Uh, yes. you, you, you probably don't know what to pray for. The Holy Spirit will rise up on the inside of you mm -hmm. and give you the language necessary. Yes. He will labor through you. Mm -hmm. But he will not labor through you to the part or the aspect of you that you don't submit to him. Come on. That's right. You have to submit to the Spirit in communion. Oh, you have to submit to the Spirit in communion for him to communicate effectively through you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you want to be effective in your prayer language, if you want to be able to do things externally, mm -hmm. you have to be rewired internally. Yes. That's why we lack manifestation, because we're not wired. Mm -hmm. We got the language. Mm -hmm. You know, we can write stuff down. We're good recorders. We're just not good replicators. We can mimic, but we can't model. So we can say the right thing, but not do the right thing. So we have a form, but we deny the power thereof. You get what I'm saying? And God wanted to the merge. That's a perfect world. It's a utopia in the spirit. But we got to, our will is involved. Your will is involved. I don't care. I done cast out devils out of so many folks. And I don't say that. that I know it comes from God. Don't get all sacrilegious on me. But I've done the ministry. I've participated. Is that better? I've participated in the deliverance. I found folks go right back to doing what they were doing after they got off the floor. And... <coughs> <laughs> Whole nine yards. I've had folks scratch up the floor. I mean, I pray with folks for four, three, four hours, five hours to get them free. To only to go back to doing what they were doing. So, so there's something missing. And I think it's the will. You gotta want to. Not just want to get delivered. 
but you got to want to live right. And I told you a long time ago, holiness, what holiness is all about. It's the Spirit of Christ living in you instead of you. Holiness is the Spirit of Christ, which is your new nature, living in you instead of you. And the Antichrist is you living in you instead of him. Yeah, that's true. Mm. <coughs> so, I don't know how they got to help to pray, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm asymmetrical on this morning. Number five. Gives you a divine rest. Yeah. Isaiah 28 11. I mean, 28, 9 and 12, we talked about how there's some doctrine and how we need to be weaned from the breast mm -hmm. and so he so he wants to get us from just having milk mm -hmm. some, some of us you know if in the natural if a baby get teeth and she's trying to draw he, or he, that person trying to draw from the breast it's going to be some conflict man. Oh, yeah. a little pain going. <laughs> am I right yes. it's going to hurt yeah. and some of us try you know we got some teeth or our teeth is coming in mm. and we still try to deal with the elementary principles so there's some elementary things that we need to move on from. And that's the reason why we haven't made uh, uh, enter into the rest that God would have us to enter into fully. God wants us to come into a rest. He wants you to come into a rest. Yeah, he don't want you to be, your, your senses to be suspended. He just wants cooperation. It's not some big old smoke or some big cataclysmic stirring of the atmosphere for you to enter the rest. I just gave it to you. What's the word I just said? Cooperation. Cooperation.